Um, suppose after our meeting here, you were to leave and go to the cafeteria, and as you're leaving the room, you step out of the door and you see a full-grown tiger standing there. Well, what would you do? Well, the uninteresting prediction is that most people would endeavor to leave the area in great dispatch. <laughs> but, but that's not a very interesting prediction. But if we ask, why do you do that? Why? Is your decision to run based on any detailed information that you have about that particular tiger? Or is your decision to run based on what you've seen of other tigers, about tiger folklore, or what your friends have told you about tigers? Probably your decision, your decision is based on that kind of information. That is, you are prejudging that tiger. You are using stereotypes. Okay, now, some people might say, well, I don't use stereotypes. Well, that person would go, uh, before he, he would not prejudge the tiger. He would try to get more information. And he would go up to the tiger saying, here, kitty, kitty, try to establish whether he's friendly or not, and then only, and only then, if he behaved in a menacing fashion, then the person would run. But most people make a, a, a quick uh, calculation. They make a... Uh, they weigh the expected cost of an additional unit of information about that tiger versus the expected benefit, and you just find out that the expected cost exceeds the expected benefit, so they don't search for any more information. So, uh, so now if you so you have to be kind of careful if you said that that person was behaving that way because he did not like tigers, but he's really behaving in a way to. Uh, economize on information costs. Let me give you uh, a, another example of it. Now, suppose I had, <clears throat> suppose there were uh, a, room, a group of people in the room, and there were uh, five, five white males. Do I need this? Okay. Five white males, five black males, and five white females, and five. Uh, of black females, 20 people. And if I had 20 people standing up here and you could not differentiate between those people except by race and sex, that's the only way you could differentiate among those 20 people. That is, you had zero information about any other characteristic and I suggest to you, pick a five-person basketball team among those people and if you win the game, you get a million dollars. Now, how would you choose? Now, you have, you have zero information about their basketball playing productivity, proficiency, and they all appear to you to be equal, and you can only distinguish between, by, uh, among them by race and sex. Well, a good Bayesian, he would probably confine a lot of his choices to the black males knowing that there is an association between race and sex, not necessarily a causal one, but at least an association, at least in the United States. Now, even Jermaine Greer uh, uh, would, not, would, would not say, well, I'm not going to pick men. And, and suppose she did. Suppose she chose to discriminate against men. Well, would we care? Or suppose you had a guy like Governor Wallace saying, well, look, I'm not going to give the blacks any chance. To be picked. I would love to play uh, 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 against Governor Wallace's team. <laughs> we clean them up all the time. So, so what I'm saying here is that, is that a lot of behavior that is called discrimination or preferences may not in fact be that. That is, you could, if I ask the woman in the audience to, if she knows anything about basketball, to pick out a five-person team, she would probably confine her choices to the men, and, the, and, their, and her choice would be dominated by the black males. But a man from Mars observing her behavior, would he be safe in concluding that she does not like females, neither does she like white males? No, he couldn't. That is, you want, you, we have to be very, very careful about inferring preferences 
from watching people's behavior. Now, uh, similarly, if I were to ask any one of you, or any one of you, let's play the following game. And, uh, and I tell you, I'll need that several times, yeah. And I tell you, look, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to walk to any university, let's pretend it's Stockholm University, and let's pretend for a moment we can, uh, it's completely integrated and it reflects the ethnic composition of Stockholm. Or maybe, but maybe let's stick to the United States because I know that a little bit better. And the university that we're going to be at uh, reflects the uh, ethnic composition of our, and the sexual composition of our country. And I tell you, let's play the following game. Uh, find the integral of x squared dx. And I tell you, for each person that you ask as you walk along the campus who can integrate this function correctly, I will give you $2,000. Each person that you ask to integrate this function who does not know the answer, you give me 200. Now, if you find the payoff matrix of this game sufficiently rewarding, rewarding to induce you to play the game, then the question is, how will you choose? You have, I'm, I'm also postulating that you have zero information about the mathematical proficiency of any of the students. All you're allowed to do is walk up to the person and say, what is the integral of x squared dx? How will you choose? Well, you would choose randomly if you thought that these skills were randomly held by the people in society. But probably a good Bayesian would confine his choices. He would not pick women. He would not pick blacks. He would not pick Puerto Ricans. He would probably confine his choices to Japanese males and not those wearing crew cut, not those wearing uh, sandals and, and looking hippie-like. <laughs> but he'd probably confine his choices to Japanese males. Now, again, the person is behaving on the basis of incomplete information. He is optimizing. The same thing with employment. That is, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're a firm hiring people, then you're going to, and it's going to cost you, let's say, uh, $1,500 per applicant that you interview for a job, and you're looking for an applicant who can perhaps get, uh, um, uh, let's say, 700 on an SA, on SAT test, well, would you send your recruit recruiters to places like Harlem and Philadelphia, where, the, where you, nonetheless, you have to pay $1,500 per prospective candidate, that's what it costs you to screen, but your, but your, your uh, return is going to be, rel be relatively small. So you will, you will choose other schools or schools that, where there's a higher probability of success. And indeed, the schools with the higher probability of success may not be black schools. The point that I'm trying to make here is that by observing people's behavior, there's very little that you can infer about their racial preferences. Um, now, what about discrimination is another word that we use uh, in discussion of uh, race. People uh, say that uh, you shouldn't discriminate. Well, I think that we can come up with an operational, uh, a better use of the term, or a more operational useful uh, use, uh, more operational definition of the term discrimination if we just look at it the way an economist might do, that is, discrimination is solely the act of choice. Okay, now, scarcity requires us to make choice. That is, when I, when I came to Stockholm, I had to discriminate against other possible uses of my time. Uh, when I married my wife, I had to discriminate against other women, and she unfortunately requires for me to continue this discrimination. <laughs> uh, now you might say, well, that kind of discrimination doesn't harm anybody. I'd be insulted because uh, for you to say something like that means for me, for my marrying my wife not to harm other women, I would have to be uh, the kind of man that only one woman would want, and that's obviously not the case. <laughs> so that kind of discrimination is indeed harmful. And matter of fact, we do it all the time, don't we? That is, uh, any of you women, I know that they're roughly, when you're choosing to marry somebody or choosing a mate, they're roughly two and a half billion choices for you around the world. Now, how do you 
choose that one mate? Uh, do you give each guy a chance? <laughs> or do you narrow it down on based on some kind of criteria that the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission would not accept? Uh, and you probably do. You probably do. So, so do we care that people uh, uh, use stereotypes? Do we care that people have preferences? Do we care whether people discriminate? Now, it seems like all those things are necessary and common attributes of human behavior. So to tell somebody not to discriminate is foolish. To sell, tell someone not to discriminate by race is foolish uh, as a general premise because most people marry people uh, of their own ethnic group. Uh, Matter of fact, it's even worse than that. They marry people of their own education and their own income standards. So all this does, th you know, it makes the income distribution more skewed or makes inequalities uh, more skewed than they otherwise might be.